geisha continue to uphold performing arts traditions in Japan. A private banquet in the company of geisha is considered the ultimate in elegant hospitality. For centuries, geisha were fashion trendsetters. At their peak, there were 80,000 of them working in Japan. Though the heyday of the geisha is now long past, for this young woman, it is still a dream profession. While an elderly geisha struggles on after the Great East Japan earthquake. On this edition of Japanology Plus, our theme is geisha. We'll take a close look at this unique profession that keeps tradition alive in contemporary Japan. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus. I'm Peter Barakat. Today I'm in Asakusa, an area which is well known for preserving some of the atmosphere of the old Edo, as Tokyo used to be known until the middle of the 19th century. It's also an area that's closely associated with geisha culture and has been since the days of the Edo period. And even now, it's not unusual to catch a glimpse of one of them on her way to work right here behind the main temple in Asakusa. The word geisha simply means an artist. Let's start off with taking a look at what kind of artists they are. A woman in a gorgeous kimono and striking makeup. This is a geisha. About 1,000 geisha are active today. Contrary to a misconception outside Japan, geisha do not engage in prostitution. Rather, they are skilled practitioners of traditional hospitality and performing arts. Geisha work in tea houses or exclusive restaurants called ryote. An area where these businesses congregate is called a hanamachi, or flower quarter. Tokyo, Kyoto and Kanazawa are known for their hanamachi. Let's pay a visit to a ryote. <laughs> Inside, guests are ushered into an old-fashioned, tatami-floored banquet room. Here, geisha attend to diners, pouring drinks and engaging in small talk to create a convivial atmosphere. To add a touch of vitality, they also sing and dance to the music of the shamisen. And they amuse guests with age-old party games, such as the work of geisha. As a geisha's job is to entertain, her personal appearance is crucial. Geisha apply all their own makeup following traditional techniques. The white powder creates a fluttering contrast between the face and a colorful kimono. The younger the geisha, the more red she uses. This expresses youthful exuberance. Finally, she applies her lipstick. Black, white and red. This striking colour combination is characteristic of geisha makeup. Choosing the right kimono is another important job for a geisha. For example, a vivid cherry blossom motif for spring. From autumn to winter, chrysanthemum and red leaf designs are popular. Evoking a sense of the season is a key feature of a geisha party. Attire is chosen carefully. But the most important thing of all for a geisha is the traditional arts that they perform at parties. They train in singing, dancing and playing musical instruments. Hi. Other skills that geisha must master to entertain their guests include immaculate manners and graceful movements. That's why they study the tea ceremony, flower arranging and other traditional arts, all under the guidance of prominent teachers. A geisha's schedule is packed with training from morning to evening. Then she attends banquets at night, it is common for a workday to finish after midnight. 
All this effort, day in and day out, is to ensure that they provide an unforgettable experience. So let me introduce our guest for today, Mr. Kenji Watanabe, who's an expert on Edo period literature in general and geisha culture in particular. Thank you very much for being with us today. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm looking forward to being your guide to the world of geisha in Asakusa. Today's guest, Kenji Watanabe, is an expert in early modern Japanese literature. He has visited Hanamachi Geisha quarters all over the country for the past 30 years, studying the history and culture of geisha. <laughs> Today, he will be taking us to a ryote tucked away in Asakusa to show us what the geisha world is like these days. The word ryote, I know it means a restaurant, but it kind of has a connotation of, for me anyway, politicians having secret discussions mm. and stuff. Is that accurate? Well, a ryote offers an extremely private environment where secrets are protected, where discretion is scrupulously observed. So, if you're a politician, let's say, or a CEO of a company, you might come here to conduct important negotiations or to exchange frank opinions. Even us, when we want total privacy, it's nice to be able to come to a place like this. So, shall we just go in? I remember from the time I, I was a child, if you asked somebody in England anyway what their image of Japan was, there may be two or three things, and one of them would be a geisha. It's almost like a cliché. Um, but I think really people have not very much idea what geisha are all about. So what is a geisha? What is it they do? Well, look at the word geisha. It means entertainer, someone with the skill to entertain. That's a geisha. What sort of skills are we talking about? Mm. It's essential that a geisha be familiar with the whole range of traditional Japanese customs. But that's not all. She must also be cultured. Most of a geisha's customers will be politicians, corporate executives, people like that. In Asakusa, there are many wealthy business owners and entrepreneurs. A geisha must be skilled in handling their conversation. So she needs to be versatile. If she's speaking with business executives, she might have to follow a conversation about, say, the stock markets. She has to nod along and reply in a way that shows she's paying attention. I mean, if, if, the, if the person's talking to you, and you're, even if you're just nodding, I think there's a difference between nodding and understanding what they're saying and nodding and not understanding what they're saying, and that's going to be very obvious to the customer as well. But she can't just go, yeah, yeah. She needs to be able to tune in enough to sympathise, to say things like, what a difficult situation, oh, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. That's what the client expects. To do that, a geisha needs to have her wits about her. The profession of geisha came into being about 300 years ago. In Edo, as Tokyo was then called, there was one officially sanctioned pleasure quarter, Yoshiwara. In its heyday, 3,000 courtesans worked in Yoshiwara, a district that drew visitors from across Japan. The city's biggest entertainment district, Yoshiwara generated 100 million yen a day in today's money. At banquets where customers were having fun, Geisha entertained them with performances and conversation. A strict distinction was made in Yoshiwara between courtesans and geisha. This raised the status of the geisha and helped to differentiate their profession. Geisha were important emblems of culture in that period. They modeled for ukiyo-e woodblock prints, the popular visual medium of the day. They were star players of the shamisen, which was indispensable to the era's popular music. Kabuki plays and novels were often about geisha. Geisha even taught performing arts to children at community classes and in private lessons. 
the geisha were at the forefront of Edo culture, capturing the public's imagination. How did the people of Edo perceive the geisha? They were role models. Mm. Opportunities for women to be employed were very limited in that period. They had few outlets for personal success. In that sense, the job of a geisha offered a woman a chance to have some independence. People knew the geisha world was very demanding, but they also idolized geisha, treated them as pop stars almost. Mm. Have a look at this. Do you know what this is? It's an ukiyo-e woodblock print of a geisha applying makeup, and it actually served as an advertisement. The geisha is using a perfumed white face powder popular at the time. An actual geisha served as the model for this picture, which promoted the product among women in the city. In other words, women would see this print and they'd want to try this kind of makeup. It actually launched a fashion trend. The geisha culture that flourished in Edo spread across Japan in the late 19th century. At the peak in the early 20th century, there were 80,000 geisha working nationwide, 1,200 in Asakusa alone. As times changed, geisha went into decline across Japan. Today, the number of geisha working in Asakusa has dropped to just 25. However, one young woman is on track to become a full-fledged geisha next spring. Chihana, who's currently an apprentice. She's 21. There are no other geisha her age in Asakusa, and she will be the first in six years to attain full status. The geisha world has high hopes for her. She first became fascinated by geisha in junior high school when she saw how glamorous they looked on a TV show. She started thinking she could do it as a career. After finishing high school, she started on the path of becoming a geisha, an exotic world centered on drinking parties at first, her parents opposed her decision. そうですね、after entering the geisha world, Chihana faced the daunting task of learning all the required etiquette and performing skills. She considered quitting any number of times, but she always rallied and hung in for these three years. こう